hello everyone in this video i will demonstrate how to create a simple database in ms access so uh, we are supposed to design a database for managing inventory for a small business uh, it's sylvester's bike shop and it is located in san francisco california and uh, sells road mountain hybrid leisure and children's bicycles so currently, uh, Sylvester purchases bikes from three suppliers, but plans to add new suppliers in the near future. So using the information provided, we are supposed to build a simple relational database to manage information about Sylvester's suppliers and products. So that's, that's the information given to us and related information is posted on the blackboard so if you go to uh, week three and scroll it down you'll see this case here so we have been given two tables first of all let's go ahead and download the table on the desktop so click on the supplier table. it's a text file and it will open in a browser so we'll right click here save as and i'll go to the desktop here okay looks like already saved it last time so let's replace it. Okay. And then I have another file here, products. So let's delete this one so I can show you how to download instead of replacing it. So click on this products, product table here and we can go in the show folder here or we can just go to the download and copy this file control c and paste it in our desktop folder here and then i'll just delete these characters here so we downloaded downloaded these two tables this, so we have to create a simple database using these two tables so let's open this table suppliers table uh you know you have supplier number company name, street address, city, state, and zip code. And the information is given, supplier number. Here, supplier number is acting as a primary key. Primary key is the key that uniquely identifies every record in a table. It's very much like your JUID. If I know your JUID, I can locate a particular student. And um, even if two students have the same name, they will have different JUIDs. So JUID is a primary key because it uniquely identifies every student. So likewise, supplier number is a primary key that uniquely identifies every supplier in the uh, in the table. Every table must have a primary key. Okay, keep that in mind. So uh, likewise, we have been given information about the product table. So, uh, so here we have all the information related to product, product number, product category, product name, purchase cost, selling price, supplier number, quantity on hand, and reorder label. So again, here supplier number is acting as a primary key, okay? Uh, because it uniquely identifies every product in the table. Uh, another thing you need to note is, uh, you know, how these two tables are related to each other. So let me bring that one down here. It looks like open multiple files. So, so, so if you see the text file here, you know, supplier number is here and supplier number is also mentioned in our product table. And this common field will be used to link these two tables to each other so that they can talk to each other, okay? This is called one-to-many relationship, which means one supplier can supply many products. If you see here, for example, supplier five is supplying four products, but each product is supplied by exactly one supplier. So that's why we put supplier ID as a foreign key in the product table. So supplier number in the product table is called foreign key because it's the primary key of the supplier table appearing in the product table to create the relationship between these two tables so that they can talk to each other. Just keep in mind, uh, the you will always put supplier number 
in in the product uh, table as a foreign key because one supplier can supply many products and not the other way around. Okay, otherwise. Uh, you may uh, argue that why not to put product number in the supplier table instead of putting supplier number in the, in the product table. It's not going to work because one product is supplied by only one supplier. So, so keep in mind, this is one to many relationship and that's how these two tables are linked. So with this brief introduction, uh, let's go ahead and quickly create some tables in MS Access. MS Access is the database application and it only works on PC. So single click on this blank database here and make sure you select the folder. Let's say I want to go to desktop here, my access database, that's the one I created here. Let's give it a name. Sylvester DB, okay. So you can see the file location here. This is very important. And this is the name of the one, our database. So create here. So first thing you do when you create the database is create a table. So we have two tables. Let's create one table at a time. So I closed that one because I want to show you right from the scratch how to create the table. So go to create and create table in design view. So when you create the table, first of all, you need to uh, define the field names and their data type. For example, first uh, field here uh, is let's say supplier number. Number, I will let it be short text. So it means the type of data we are storing in this field is going to be string data type or text data type. But we don't need this many characters because it's just waste of space. So we're going to change the field size to two. Okay, because if you see the table here, suppliers table, you know, supplier number only uh, holds one character, but we are giving two. Maybe in the future, we might have more suppliers. So second one is uh, company name is going to be text. I will give it 25 here because we don't need more than 25 characters. Then we have street address, short text again, and 25 characters again. Um, some of you may ask why, when you say supply number, why we are using it as a text data type? Why not to use number? The reason being, you only denote number data type for the fields on which you will perform some calculations like addition, uh, aggregations, finding minimum, maximum, average, summation, uh, like we do that on selling price or you know uh, purchase cost, but not on supplier number because supplier number, the purpose is unique identifier. It just identifies every record uniquely. And when you identify it as a text, that means when you try to perform any calculation by mistake on this field, database will not allow it. So just keep that in mind. So moving on, street address, then we have city, short text, let's say 25 again, not more than 25. Then we have state, short text again. Let's do it 25 here, zip. I mean, zip code, short text, and let's do five here. And for the state, we don't need more than two, okay? So, and then we are going to identify a supplier number. We go to table design here, okay? And make it a primary key, okay? So that is identified as a primary key. So we'll save this one, we'll call it supplier, table, okay. Now you can uh, switch back to the view here, data sheet view, okay. So this, if you go to the uh, table design view, you can see, you can flip flop this one, okay. Or alternatively, if you just close this one, double click on this one, it will open in a data sheet view. And so you're in the home tab, you can always go back to design view to change the fields if you need to, okay. 
so here you can enter enter the values for example i can say one uh by by cyclist choice so you can enter all the you know feel like this manually okay but i'm not going to do manually because you can you know import the data directly uh, so i'm going to delete this record then close this table we are going to get external data new data source so because if you see external data do you want to import or do you want to export we want to import so we'll go here file it's a text file and we'll go to the desktop uh, my database access and supplier table and i want to append this to supplier table so let's say okay here so let's go to the next year delimited characters such as comma or tab separated uh, separate each field so that's what it is uh, next year first row is the field name okay next year and finish okay so if you double click on it this will work another thing you have to keep in mind is that this name field names here that you see here all these field names must exactly match with the with the field names given in your text file otherwise import will fail okay because database needs to know uh you want to import the values for which particular field okay uh so even if you do a little like, let's say even if there is uh, not a space here comma here this company name is different than this company name here and if you have different names like this import will not work just keep in mind okay let's close this one let's create another table uh get a create design table and this time we'll create the product table so we have product name number again it should be text let's go to two decimal places okay uh, two field size two num correct number of characters should be two not more than two because if you see the product number we don't use more than two characters we just have 24 product numbers then we have product category. I'm going to use short text 25 here. Let's say product name, a short text again, 25 here. Then we'll do purchase cost should be currency here. So because you can drop it down and select the currency here uh because this is the dollar value we are going to store here and here we can say two decimal places in the decimal places field so then you have selling price again we are going to choose currency with two decimal places and then we have supplier number now this supply number field is coming from supplier table so we need to make sure they are exactly the same data type for example if you double click on supplier table is already open here okay if you go to the design view supplier number is short text and two so here also we need to make sure supplier number is short text and two otherwise you may not be able to link these two table okay quantity on hand on hand and that should be number okay and we don't need long integer probably we can get away with integer easily save some space and make database performance more efficient and say order label reorder label uh, is also number and uh, integer here okay so product number is the primary key here again again make sure you're in the table design primary key and we are going to store this one click on this store button here and say product underscore table okay 
so we created two tables next thing what we need to do is close all these tables and uh, create the relationship between these two tables so for that we have to go to the database tools just want to make sure oh so we need to import the data here first okay in a supplier table has the information but product table is empty so let's get the external data from file this time we are going to fetch it from excel file again you can manually uh, put in those values or we can simply import i guess import is much easier make sure here you don't select the supplier table select the product table okay browse here products table and say okay here okay so next year it's identifies first one as a heading columns or column headings next year product table click here so script out of range okay so let's say close this one let's see the product table here let's go to the design view here i mean home design view here okay so short text short text here doesn't look like that problem let's increase this product name to 50 supplier number so rest doesn't matter so let's save this one let's try to import it now subscript out of range again okay let me close this one and reopen sometime that could create a problem okay let's do it again table so next next finish see it worked sometimes you know ms access doesn't behave the way it's supposed to behave and that's a problem with microsoft technology but often you have to do trial and error and you can also google search that particular error so so now we have both the tables have those values here and I don't think we needed to expand. Uh, for example, if you go to the home here and go to the design view here. So I guess we increased the, uh, if, we, if we maintain it 25, that should, should still work. Ah, okay. So we are suppressing it. We are bringing it lower. We don't want to do that, okay. Let's close this one and not change. Do you want to say the design? No. Now let's create the relationship. Go to the relationships table here. So, and double click on products table and suppliers table here. Okay. So again, how did you go there? Let me redo it. Probably I, I did it pretty fast. Database tools, relationships, add these two tables. Okay can expand it and we are going to link supplier number in the supplier table with supplier number in the product table. So I do left click on it and drag it onto the supplier number in the product table. So this window will tell you that you're linking supplier number in supplier table with the supplier number in the product table and you have to enforce referential integrity. So I'll explain the meaning of this. Okay, so create, it created, okay, if it did, if it does not create the relationship, that means your values are not matching in these two tables for the supplier number. So you need to open the supplier number field and make sure that they are the same values, okay? 
So close this one. We're going to save this relationships here. Now let's open the product table. Okay. Let's say you want to enter a new bike. Let's say 30. Name doesn't matter here. What matters is the foreign key here. Supplier number. Let's say I try to insert six. And then you go to the next row. It will say that you cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in the table, supplier table. Okay. Why this is happening? So if you open the supplier table, you have five suppliers only. You don't have the sixth one. So you're trying to use the sixth one, which is not there in the supplier table. And because we enforce referential integrity in the relationship window, this will not work. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't enforce the referential integrity, you will be, you will be allowed to enter invalid values for supplier number. And that's why it's very important to enforce referential integrity. So let's go ahead and delete this one. Okay, now it won't let you delete it. What you need to do is you need to put in some valid values. So let's say any value between one through five, then it will let you go to the next one and then you can come back and delete the record. Okay, let's save this one and uh, I will stop my lecture video here. Uh, thank you very much for watching.